Hey guys, so um, I just wanted to create a short video on how to do a little bit of jewelry in base Rhino for those who aren't ready to get into Matrix. Um, this will just allow you to see the kind of the, the difference in the, the speed or workflow um, when making jewelry and what the differences are between Rhino and Matrix. I understand like some people have some concerns with the fact that Matrix is 7900 US and um, Rhino, base Rhino is under a thousand dollars. So I'm going to show you how to create a ring in Rhino um, for those who just want to, I guess, start out in Rhino. And I guess when I go over everything, it'll I'll explain kind of what things are faster when using matrix the matrix is going to be faster because like the parametric design um, for jewelry a lot of things are already pre-configured like your ring rails your gemstones um, it's easier to modify um, when you want to do prongs or settings you don't have to lay them out individually or uh, it's easy like again you can easily size things so it just makes your workflow a lot faster but I understand some people they they don't want to spend that much money and they just want to kind of get started so right base rhino is an excellent way to get started um another good thing with rhino is if you know how to use rhino um you can venture out into other uh, fields because base rhino is a full-blown cad software uh, it's used in other industries so if you're an architect um, you can do buildings and landscapes if you or if you want to do, I guess, automotive, you can do that. Or just basically any 3D model. It just, Matrix is specifically designed for the jewelry industry. Okay, so we're just gonna get into it now. Um, you have four viewports, okay? So your top, front, right, and perspective. And on the left here, we have our tools. So the thing with the tools here, you in order for you to know what each tool is you kind of have to hover over and then you'll see um, the name pop up so it'll take a bit of time getting used to if you've never done CAD and this is your first time you're using uh, Rhino so I know a lot of kind of veterans what they'll do is if they know the name of the uh, the tool they'll just type it in the command line up here and just typing in the command let's say if I want to do a a curve you can type curve and you'll see a, a list of curve tools okay um, but for this I'm just gonna I'm not gonna be typing commands I'm just gonna look for the, the tools so it's been a while since I used base Rhino so bear with me uh, but we're gonna try to create a simple band okay so I'm gonna go here into the and click on the circle center circle and uh, if you click and hold, you'll get this uh, menu here, which we can click and drag if you want to lift it off. So for commonly used tools, you can, so let's say here, my surface uh, menu. If I, I like to have that open here. Um, I also like to have the transform. So here. And the other ones I can just leave. So I'm just gonna drag these out somewhere so they're not in the way. Alrighty, so first one, I'm gonna choose circle uh, curve. So click on this and to center it, we can either turn on grid snaps or you can hit zero on the keyboard. And zero means the zero axis on the grid. So if I type zero, hit enter, there's my start of my circle. Now for a ring, I'm gonna draw my circle into the front view. So in order to go there, I'm just gonna drag my mouse down. So I'm in the front view. And you should know kind of the millimeters or the diameter of, well, the diameter of the finger size in order for this to work. So in matrix, you actually can just say, I want size six, size six and a half, size seven. But for this, we actually have to know the millimeters. So bear with me. So 
So let's say I want to do a ring that size 7. So it's 17.2 millimeters in diameter. So in the front view here, I'm going to type in 17.2 um, in the command line. So right now it's actually set to radius. I'm going to change that to diameter and do it again. 17.2, enter, and I have my first curve. So this curve will be, just keep in mind, it's a 7. Okay. Next, what we want to do is we want to do a profile, okay? So let's go back. So in the right view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the profile that I want for um, my band. So I want to start out with a rectangle. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. And in the command line, uh, we have the option to click on center. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, we need to have snaps. So at the bottom here, we have a list of snaps we can use. Okay. So I want to click on. For this one, I want quad snap because I want to snap to the quad, like the quadrant of the circle. So the circle can be split up into, I guess you can say north, east, south, west. So if I turn on the quad snap, I can snap now to the circle here at the bottom, and then draw out my rectangle. So in terms of the width and height, I can type that in. So let's say I want this band to be, let's be six millimeters um, wide. So I'm gonna type three. Oh, sorry, no, let's type, what's this again, sorry. Escape, right click. If you right click, it'll redo the previous command. Type, click on center, snap, six, enter and the height to enter okay so now if you notice this isn't actually on the um, the first curve and if it's inside that means this is going to be too small so what we want to do is we want to move this down so what I can do now is go and move it so in transform so the menu I brought down at the bottom here so I can click on move and it's gonna say in the command line point to move from so I want to snap to the middle of this line here which I can't do because my middle snaps not on so I'm gonna go down to the bottom turn on my mid snap click on the uh, the middle of that curve here so the side of the rectangle I drew and then snap it and bring it down so it snaps to the quad of the circle okay so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called a sweep I'm going to click on the circle I drew earlier and I want to go to surface creation and click on this option here called sweep one rail. I'm going to click on that and then if you read the command line it'll say select cross section curve. So cross section curve is the second curve. So if I click on this second curve and hit enter it's going to give you this um, uh, the seam direction. So I'm just going to bring it up here. You can leave it where it is. It's fine too, since we only have one profile. Or not, well, one, yeah, cross section curve. And then we're going to hit enter to complete. So I can click OK. And if you go here where it says perspective, click on that drop down. And we have the ability to change the render options in um, the viewport. So right now it's in wireframe. So that's why I only see the, the curves of my sweep or the band I've created. I'm going to go and click on shaded and there is our simple band. Now let's say you want to change the, the shape of this cross-section curve or what we call in matrix profiles. What we have to do is we have to go in and manually change this curve. Okay, So I'm going to delete my sweep and I'm going to recreate because I want to dome top. In matrix, we can actually just click on this, uh, what we call in matrix profile, and we can actually just go and edit and just quickly change it to um, a library of profiles, and we can just click on which one we want, and it'll, and we can just change it on the fly. But for this in Rhino, what we have to do is we have to recreate it manually. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw an arc. So uh, I'm going to click on this, where it's we call this arc direction. And again, so I have my mid snap, quad snap on. For this, I want to snap to the corner here. In order to snap to this corner, what I need to do is turn on a different snap called end snap. So then I have the ability to snap to the end of that side, this end, and then I can draw my little arc. Now, this arc is going to extend this profile by, I don't know what amount, but by a bit. So what I want to do now is move this and line it up to this this uh, line on the rectangle. So what I want to do is I'm going to click on move in the transform, snap to the quad or mid of the arc I drew, and then snap that to the mid of this line on the rectangle. So now I know that from from here to here, it's going to be two millimeters. So what we need now to do is we need to trim these sides off because we don't need this. So I'm going to select both curves. So to do that, what I ended up doing, so you can select objects by clicking on them, holding shift, and I can click another object. Or if you drag your uh, mouse while clicking on the left button, um, left mouse button, we can do a, something called a box select, and I can box select this. So once the both objects are inside the box, it will select it. Okay. If I box select from the left to right, <coughs> excuse me, from left to right, you get a solid box. In order for you to select objects in the solid box here, the whole uh, object that you want selected has to be enclosed in the solid box. Okay. If it's partially in it, it won't select. But if you drag from right to left, as long as it's partially in that box, it will select. And you'll notice it's dotted. Okay, so I'm going to select both these curves here. And what I want to do is something called trim. So I'm going to go back here into my menu and click on this one here, which is called trim. And I'm just going to trim this and this off. Okay, so whatever you click on, it's going to trim it off. Um, at the intersected um, parts. So now that I've trimmed that off, I can hit enter or right mouse click. And then what we need to do, so right now this is two curves. What we need to do now is join them together. So now I'm going to click on join here. Now it's joined together and I have a new cross section curve. Okay, so I'm going to click on the first circle rail or first circle curve. Um, and then we're going to click on sweep one, click on the cross section, hit enter. I want to have the ability to change the, um, the seam, which I'm just going to leave as is right now. Hit enter again, you get a menu. So this is, um, just leave everything at default, click OK. And now we have our new band. So the band shape and size will be determined by your cross section. So however you draw this cross section, so in terms of the width and height and shape, that will determine the sweep or the band you're gonna get. So that's it for our first, uh, I guess, video in Rhino. And that's how we make um, wedding bands.